Welcome back and uh, thank you so much for staying with NTV Weekend Edition. You're of course still with me, Sandra Twinovlio. Now recently, the president recently urged members of parliament to raise the money allocated for the parish development model to 100 million per parish to fast track economic transformation at the grassroots. The move will see the money allocated for the program raised to over 1 trillion shillings. Tonight, we have Mr. David Zijan, who's the member of parliament for Wutembe constituency. Once again, we host you in our studios we are privileged and this time we are talking about the parish development model a very good evening thank you for joining us good evening and thank you for having me it's a pleasure to be back sandra well now so many people have probably had parish development model parish development model what is it exactly it I, we know it's an initiative you know working towards uh doing away with poverty in the country but how different is it from the initial initiatives we've had for instance in yoga I think the difference with uh, the parish development model uh, as compared to the past initiatives is that the parish development model, if the president's request is honored to raise the money to 100 million, is that the parish development model will have more resources uh, brought down to the lowest planning, economic planning unit of government, which in that context is the parish. Uh, secondly, it's also going to operate on existing government structures because at the, at the parish level you have technical uh, crew. The parish has, the, the act provides for the parish uh, executive committee which will be headed by a parish chief who is a technical person. The recommendation is that uh, that person should have, a dip, uh, should have a minimum of a diploma in public administration. So. Uh, if you compare that with the uh, MIOGA, for example, the parish development model has technical government structures uh, to operate, to supervise, to oversee it. It also has guidelines. The MIOGA program did not have guidelines. Mm -hmm. That's why it was operated haphazardly. Like at the, the, the level in the constituency, some people did not know who was in charge. In some constituencies, the RDC was in charge. In another constituency, the, uh, the, the development officers, the commercial development officers, commercial officers of the district were in charge. In other constituencies, politicians were in charge. So it did not have guidelines. The people were not, had not been trained who are managing this money. They had not uh, skills in bookkeeping and budgeting, for example. Uh, parish development model has guidelines. Parish development model has a little bit more money uh, if the president's 100 million request is honored. So as compared to other programs, uh, the parish development model has a little bit of preparation with it and to be handled more technically. So it should have an advantage as compared to its predecessors. Now that brings me to the question, why the urgency to come up with the parish development model? Was it that you realize the initial initiatives that had been put in place were not working? We are not achieving what they were intended to achieve. Would you say that? Why the urgency to come up with a new initiative? Well, um, the government uh, has a plan which is rolled out in development plans. So the cabinet passed three, uh, six development plans. Development plan one, development plan two. We are now at development plan three. This is geared towards vision 2040, uh, driving Uganda into a middle income country. So we are at development plan three. The disadvantage with these plans, which uh, leaves a bit of uh, collateral challenges with past plans is that it is time bound. Instead of judging a plan on the basis of its success, it is judged on the basis of time. So every term goes with a development plan. So because we are in this term, in which the development plan three should be rolled, therefore the development plan three has been rolled. My view would have been that a plan should be allowed time to succeed or fail. Uh, unfortunately, it has a time, uh, these plans are rolled at, uh, with the term, the political term. So I in every political term, you'll expect a, another development plan rolled out. Let's speak about how it will operate. You did mention that this one is going to be better organized. Let us speak exactly to that. How does it operate? For instance, if I want to get uh, some money, you know, to start a business, I do know that with this parish development model, you're not supposed to have some bit of security. We want to understand how does it operate for the people watching us this evening? Well, uh, w when it eventually begins to uh, work, because it hasn't started yet, uh, we are at this time 
time, they are working on training and recruiting. Uh, but uh, as compared to Mioga, for example, Mioga circles, which are the beneficiaries of the fund, are constituents-wide circles. So that if it's uh, a border-border -border circle, for example, it brings together border-borders uh, from one end of the constituency to another end of the constituency. The parish development model is going to be benefiting circles within a particular parish. And this money remains an asset of that parish because it is a revolving fund, so that the people own it and borrow from it depending on which priority crop uh, they are dealing with. So if the question is to whether this one will uh, have uh, a bit of wind to pro propel it into success, is that the money is closer to the people. Government is localizing access to capital. It's uh, based, th there are, under the National Development Plan, there are what they have called seven pillars. And the third pillar of that is financial inclusion. And financial inclusion is going to target people who are living under subsistence, under the subsistence economy. You'll remember that 68% of Ugandans are under subsistence uh, economy, 39% are under ag uh, a subsistence agriculture. So we want those people who are living from hand to mouth, who have less than they need, to be able to be um, given advantage, given a boost, so that their businesses, whatever they are dealing in, whether it is in maize growing or sugar cane or sunflower growing, they have a bit of capital brought to the parish level so that they are able to do their business and with time pull themselves out of substance. So the beauty of this model is that uh, the, the, the money has been brought closer to the people. Yes. However, still, when we are to compare previous initiatives, we've seen issues to do with the money not getting to the intended beneficiaries. This time round, have you streamlined that? Uh, when you say have you, <laughs> it really uh, puts me in, uh, in this spot as if I am the one calling the shots. Yes. Uh, I, am, I am a representative of the people and of course my job is to watch to ensure that the, uh, the, the fund benefits them. The challenge, see when you're going to, when we look at the parish development model and we are trying to assess whether it will succeed or not, mm -hmm. of course we will, we will, the yardstick is the programs that have been before it what have failed those programs and if government does not address those uh, bottlenecks this program will also suffer the same fate for example uh, we have found that in every development program the subs uh, as they have been coming subsequently the same people have been the beneficiaries. There are people in communities who are positioned in such a way that when there is a government program, they are there. The first ones to yeah, they are the first <laughs> ones to benefit, mm -hmm. and then their relatives, and then their Uganda, uh, And if that is not addressed, the uh, parish development model will suffer the fate that those other programs have suffered. Do you think the suffered. public has a role to play in, in the performance of this model? Do you think there's a role the public can play to see that this model is successful? <coughs> I think the public should have a role to play and it does have a role to play, but that will depend on whether the public is powerful enough against the powers that be. Because usually these programs succumb to political influence. I would, uh, for example, in the parish executive, uh, the, the parish executive, one of the requirement is that the NRM flag bearer, parish chief, NRM parish chairperson of that parish, must be on the executive of that. So he's a politician. What, wh what about when you go to urban centers where? that NRM person might not uh, wield any other influence, but the requirement is that he has to be there. And then if that NRM person is on that executive committee, he is uh, directly under the chairmanship of the NRM flag bearer for the constituency. So there is going, of course you would give it to NRM th saying that it's a party in power, uh, they are implementing their manifesto, and so it's appropriate for these people to be there to secure the interest of the party, but what about the other parties? So if politics is not watched, mm -hmm. if corruption in terms of nepotism is not watched, 
Yeah. Because the Mioga money, for example, people thought that they were being, they, because the money came during election hearing period, people thought that the government was either thanking, it was thanking them mm. for having voted or for something like of that sort. So if people are not sensitized, this is where mind change, which is the seventh pillar of the national development pr plan uh, is, if there is no mind change, the fund will fail if the population is not prepared. And that also ha hinges on what you talked about. Why does it seem to be, uh, wh wh why do we seem to be doing it in haste? So uh, the government sometimes needs to prioritize sensitizing communities ahead because what is happening with parish development model, now the sensitization is more with us. The MPs who are going to uh, pass the increment of the 100 million, the leaders, the village person is still grappling with the Mioga, which hasn't worked. Uh, is still grappling with other programs that didn't, d that didn't work. And then in the second quarter of this financial year, money will hit the ground. So usually lack of sensitization, politicking, nepotism are the problems that will also fail this program if they are not addressed. Sure, great points for the government to really consider to, to see the success of this new uh, model. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. David Zijan, who's the Member of Parliament for Wutembe Constituency, joining us tonight to speak to us about the parish development model. You too can send us your thoughts on our social media platforms in regards to the topic on Talk of the Nation tonight. We'll take a short break and NTV Weekend Edition will return shortly.